Okay, welcome to Central California. This is the Pacific Ocean. This is uh, San Francisco Bay. Uh, but what we're going to talk about today is about the California mother load, which uh, miners rushed into in 1949 in search of gold. Uh, and uh, we'll mostly be looking at pictures from Columbia, some of Murphy's, and, and a couple of a volcano. There's another reference. Here's Lake Tahoe up here. This is a little bit of a blight view from Google Earth. So if you're looking straight down, it, it's not quite right. But uh, that will generally get you into the area. But uh, how did it become that? And uh, why do we have caves there? Well, it's plate tectonics. Now, that didn't exist when I went to school. We just had continental drift. But uh, basically, they realized that you have this, ocean, this oceanic ridge that is pushing material away. And this, this makes the, the uh, oceanic crust move against uh, the continental crust. And as this happens, one folds down against the other, and you get these uh, granitic intrusions that come up. Now, if you grow through butte and stuff, you saw a lot of these. These, these granite features that you're going to butte are, are uh, these things, which are pushed up. But if you look in California and you start to date them, here's one at 200 million years, 114 million years, 105 million years, 90 million years. This thing has happened over and over and over again. So you end up with a whole series of plays. And so if you're into like stratigraphy and stuff, the stratigraphy is correct for going from here to there. Then all of a sudden, you get uh, a younger over an older, and the, and the sequence goes again and again. So anyway, it's a very, very complex geology. And here, you can see it sort of summarized. And the thing we are interested in is this really, this thing that's sitting out right here. It says a coal sitting on a volcanic mountain out in the ocean. And, and as the crust moves, you see it gets dragged underneath, and then it gets subducted, and when it gets subducted, some of it gets plastered against the, the continental plate, which we call it the terrans. So these are little pieces of terrans, and of course we're only interested in the pink, here's a little pink, here's some pink, here's some pink, and you can see the ocean is still way up there, so, to get to this cave stuff, the whole surface has to erode down about 20 miles. You know, so eventually, as it erodes, let me get the right, as it erodes, we end up with a, with a great plain. So, as you drive east in Montana, you're seeing the landscape like it used to be uh, in, in uh, where California would form. And so all of these red lines are like old rivers that were flowing across that plain. Uh, but just to make things more complex, uh, the modern Sierras, Lifted up as a huge fault walk. Oop, oop, back. So here, this used to be a plain, but now it's been lifted through this fault. And this is the modern Sierras, is how you sort of see them. Uh, and here, you can see fossil rivers. The blue are fossil rivers that are left from, from, uh, 50 million years ago, the reds are more like 30 million years ago, 
And of course, my interest is where does this correspond to limestone? And so here is a map that I've made uh, 50 years ago. I drew this map showing where this corresponded with this area right in here. And we're mainly going to be looking at this main block of limestone right here. It's along the Stanislaus River with uh, Murphy's and, and uh, Columbia. Now somebody came through in the 1890s and they mapped one of these, you know, one of these old rivers. And uh, the right button again. So here it is. And this was this was like this was like all the volcanic material that flew that that went down a river canyon. And uh, then the river canyon eroded away, but uh, the volcanic material was harder, so it stayed. And so here it is, how you see it today. So that that uh, red line lava flows that you were seeing before, here they are right here, flowing along. And they are they're about that's about a thirty billion year old stream channel. Right here, you can see the drop off leading down to the current river channel. This is all limestone back here. And that stream channel is a thousand feet below the surface you're looking at right here. So this is basically an Eocene land surface from about 50 million years ago. And there was a river that ran along the bottom right here. That's a 50, 50 million year old stream channel. And uh, so for the miners, uh, getting gold, it's uh, you need water. You have to have water to pan gold. So you have to have some way to get the water there. And uh, you also use the water to uh, run machinery. So uh, you know, here is a big lift. You know, here is a big lifting wheel, and they've, they've run this aqueduct out to it, and that provides them with the power for lifting. And you can see that they uh, took this digging fairly seriously. Uh, and uh, to get the water there, I mean, the Stanislaus River was a thousand feet below the, where they wanted to mine. So they had to make aqueducts that went for over 60 miles to uh, be able to mine this area. They had tried mining it earlier, you know, grinding up dirt and then hauling it away to where a spring was and they could pan it. But, you know, they wanted to do a high industrial mining. And so here you can see the reservoirs above the town. Uh, this is the town of Columbia. And actually, this is the river channel right through there. And once they got the water, there was there was a number of ways that they could use it. Uh, oops, back. Uh, on the on the right is they they've gotten a hose with water and they're using that at the dump box to to wash and solution the gold. In the picture on the left, they have uh, they have constructed a water wheel. And this is an interesting early water wheel. See, it's got this cover here, and you would put it over the top, so it's like an enclosed water wheel. And then you could take your hose, and you could run the water in, and you could spin this, you could spin that cable and do hoisting. Uh, and here, this is sort of a general view of Columbia. Uh, you can see some of the cars, limestone pillars there, and here, of course, is a big wheel, a big lifting wheel. This would be, this is a wheel, the dump box would be down here. Uh, that's where they would dump the, the dump the, the debris and take the, the large stuff and throw it away and then sluice the rest. Here's the town behind there. There's a big limestone column. And see, here's a couple of, here's a couple of brave kids that have 
gone out in this vein to pose as a photographer, you know. And of course, back in those days, we didn't have to worry about whether we had red suits or blue suits because uh, it was a different kind of film. And here's another picture showing the operation. And you can see there's just a heck of a lot of limestone out there. And it's, that's quite an operation. Uh, and you can see here's a little incline so they bring the stuff up and they can put it in the dump box and then they can wash it. And of course they, sh they use the same water to turn the wheel and they can, oops, why is it so jittery? Uh, but no, it's just the same water to turn the wheel, then they recapture it and use it in the dump box and, you know, then they can use it again later. And here's a view sort of from the, down on the bottom of it to give you just an idea of what the, you know, the scale of the, of the stuff is. Here's a little miner, here's the miner down here. So this was, uh, this was a hugely deep excavation. Another way that they would uh, uh, do mining uh, for lifting stuff is that we use a thing called a whim. And here they're, uh, on the, on the right here, they're, or on the left, they're constructing a whim. So this thing will be a wheel that you can put rope on, and you'll run the rope, I don't know why it does that. Uh, you, can run, you, you can run the rope around this wheel and then uh, haul with it. And here you see what an operation. They've, got, they've completed the limb, and now they have some poor horse that has to walk around and around and around to uh, haul stuff up and down. And here is a closer view of the town of Columbia. This is the main river channel, the main fossil river channel from 50 million years ago down here. You can see one of the inclines they hauled stuff out up there. Uh, and it was pretty, it was a pretty good goal site. Uh, and and uh, so if you were a building owner in here, uh, you didn't have long to survive. Because if you look at this picture here, all of these buildings are gone. They were mined away. And one of those was a pretty new brick building. And if you go to the town today, one thing that's very confusing is here is the, here is the uh, uh, Masonic Temple. Uh, and if you go to Columbia today, the Masonic Temple's over here. They took the Masonic Temple and they sold all the bricks out of it and then they dug it up. And then when they restored the town, they restored the Masonic Temple over here. So uh, when you visit the historic park, it's a little bit different than it really was in the old days. And of course, getting down more into what we're interested in, here you can see here, he's, he's digging down a great big sink. And this is tremendously deep. Here's the town up here, here's the pit. Uh, here's another miner down here digging along this limestone pillar. So that's a fossil. And here is a little solution hole. So we know that cave development is coming on. I'm not, you know, I'm not sure the date of that hole, you know, maybe it's 50 million years old, but it could be more recent. Uh, here's another place where you can see they've, they've intersected a void. So, you know, originally there was a, you know, an older cave down there, and then it's been eroded into uh, in later times. And here is a possible entrance where the limestone goes all the way to the top, and you can see it left a big chamber. But whatever cave is there has been dissected, you know, later on. And here we have the hapless miner. And if you actually look at this picture in 3D, you can see that this is actually real cave passage here. Now they may have blasted out a little bit in the top so the miner can put through with the clark, but, but that actually is a segment of a 
of the fossil cave. And here is a here is a place where they exploited the, you know, existing cave system to run the water sluice through it. And passing on from Columbia, here's a few of the other towns. This is the town of Murphy's. And again, they had a big karst mining area in there. And uh, here you can see uh, they're excavating down a fissure. And then they would, uh, you know, put all the dirt in these buckets. If you look, here's another miner over here. There's the miner filling this bucket. And you can see this big derrick. So they'd swing this derrick down and they'd pick up the bucket and they would haul it over there and there's their dump box over there. And this is the town, this is the town of Volcano. And there actually is a cave there. The, the Sonic Cave is located right down here. Here it's labeled down there. Uh, and sort of right behind this picture up the mountain is uh, Black Chasm, which is a commercial cave in California now, quite spectacular with beautiful white pipes. And then here's another picture of Volcano just showing uh, the hydraulic system. Here's the hose that's coming up. You're in the top of the dump box, so you would dump the debris up there. This wooden grate would keep the large material from going down, and they would just shovel that away. And then they would wash, they would wash the gold through the sploosh. And this is the kind of stuff that's left over. And you can wander around in the limestone for hours and hours and hours looking for inventories. And uh, I've never found a good one. There's more left karst mining debris. This is Spring Gulch. This is what left after. Or this is what's left after they find that, and uh, they found a 50-pound gold nugget there. That's why they bought all the sand machinery. And then at Knapp's Ranch, they found a 50-pound gold nugget. Uh, and uh, so the mining is uh, the mining is through there, but there is still a kind of car skull we can find there. This has turned in to a fabulous bowling site. It's written up in rocks and ice, and and. Uh, you know, there's moves in the cars that you can find, you just don't happen everywhere. And then finally, just to finish it off, I guess I ought to show you a real cave picture. And this is the earliest picture that was ever taken of a California cave. It was taken in either 1866 or 1870. And I do have some of these uh, views in my truck that you can look at for a viewer if you like to glance at a view, but that's it. <laughs>